Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain about the measurement of displacement. So, measurement of displacement. Displacement. What do you mean by displacement? Change. Change in a particular position of a device. Okay. So, this type of calculation or explanation is already studied in the previous videos. Again, I want to discuss because a, a separate physical parameter like displacement is given. So, measurement of displacement, it is defined as the motion of a straight line between two points. Okay, suppose if the two points we have considered A and B, then if any object or a person is moving from here to here, this is generally called as displacement. So, movement in a particular object or a person or whatever it is. So, movement in a straight line or a rotational or a angular direction, whatever it is, it is nothing but a displacement. <coughs> so, displacement transducers are used to measure the translational motion and use as a secondary component in measurement systems. So, measurement of displacement using different transducers. Different transducers are based upon the different types of variation of the parameters like resistance, capacitance or inductance. Suppose, if the displacement changes the resistance of the device, suppose the displacement will change the resistance of the measuring device, resistance of the measuring device, then such type of devices are known as resistance transducers. If the same displacement causes the changes in the capacitance of the measuring instrument, then capacitor transducers are there. Then if the displacement of the device causes the inductance change in the measuring instrument, then that is known as inductive transducer. So depending upon the type of parameter that is varying that uh, these are classified into resistive transducers, capacitive transducers and inductive transducers. <clears throat> so, if you take the first parameter variation of resistance with respect to the variation of displacement that is nothing but resistive transducer. So, what is nothing, what is this variation of variation of displacement or movement, variation of movement or position and nothing but displacement causes change in resistance okay so the displacement in the object will result a change in the resistance value so there are three types of uh, resistance transducers generally available uh, the first one is a translatory type, second is rotational type and third is heliport. Okay, so by seeing, see this, in the first one is nothing but translatory type. All these are, if you see properly, all these are nothing but potentiometers. All these are nothing but potentiometers. So, from here to here, we have applied a complete input voltage and here an output voltage we are taking from ground and another point is taking from the wiper okay so wiper is connected at a different place at any place on this complete resistance potentiometer depending upon the movement linear movement here translatory is nothing but linear movement either the wiper moves in the upward direction or it moves in the downward direction so displacement of this wiper causes in the upward direction or in the downward direction that causes the selection of resistance differently okay suppose if the wiper completely goes upward direction and uh, stays here then what is the amount of resistance that we are selecting complete resistance so whatever the input voltage that we are giving the complete voltage will be applied at the output suppose if the complete uh, if the wiper is completely going to down and it is now at this point so what is the voltage at the output now it is zero because the, it is directly connected to the ground there is no resistance left so, depending upon the movement in the upward or downward directions, there is a change in the output voltage. Okay, this is what the displacement measurement with respect to the change in the resistance. Here, what happens? Resistance varies so that the output voltage will vary. In the similarly, similar case with the rotational type, the same wiper we are taking, the entire input voltage is applied between these two points here and here. And now we are taking the output voltage ground. This is the ground point that is common. 
for both input and output and we are taking the positive terminal that is from the wiper output so wiper may be connected at any position previously the wiper has been rotated in the upward and downward direction now but it is now in the rotational type in the same case with the third one that is helipot where the uh, uh, wiper is uh, rotated in the helical shape because the resistance potentiometer now it is in the helical shape this is what the resistance transducer how the resist how the displacement will change the resistance of the measuring instrument and the second one is inductive transducer what do you mean by inductive transducer displacement now it will change the inductance <coughs> <coughs> now it will change the inductance of the measuring instrument see here uh, this concept also we have explained in the case of lvdt <clears throat> if you recall the concept of lvdt what do you mean by lvdt linear variable differential transducer or transformer linear variable differential transformer or transducer is a device which is used to convert the displacement into some electrical quantity in terms of inductance okay so what is the arrangement we have the input voltage is applied input voltage is applied between the primary coil primary coil here and here we have completely applied the entire input voltage now on the other hand we have secondary coils which are two secondary coils not a single coil we have using here we are using two secondary coils coil one and this is coil two secondary coil two okay so in between these primary and secondary windings we are using an iron core iron core that takes a displacement in the upward direction and in the downward direction okay so what happens what is the purpose of iron core iron core is used to develop the flux from primary winding to the secondary winding this is the main purpose of the iron core that we have introduced in between these two primary and secondary windings okay suppose if the iron core we have bring we have brought this iron core in the upward direction completely moving out that means what happens up to this point up to this point i have brought then what happens the core is the core iron core is in either to this secondary coil one and somewhat it comes in between the primary winding and secondary winding one then what happens more flux is induced more flux is induced in the coil one than coil two okay when i will write here uh, if you want you can write down uh, when core comes near to when core comes near to coil one flux is more at coil one no flux is at coil two because there is no iron core okay then if the output voltage if the output emf electromotive force is because of this coil one is e1 then e1 is more than e2 so e1 is e1 is the electromotive force that is from the coil one and e2 is the electromotive force that is from the coil two emf from coil two okay similarly when core comes near to coil two coil two what happens now we are completely introducing into the iron core inside completely there is no iron core present between primary winding and coil one now the entire core is in between primary winding and coil two then what happens flux is more at coil two then e2 is more then e1 e2 is more than e1 so in this case in the first case e1 is greater than e2 in the second case e2 is greater than e1 because of the movement of the flux so because of this one what happens output voltage will vary so the output voltage will be affected based upon the induct uh, produced flux so the movement of flux the change in the flux is due to the movement of soft iron core between the so primary and secondary coils 
So this is how the inductance has been changed because of this change in the displacement. Okay, this is what the inductive transducer. Coming to the third type of transducer, which is a capacitor transducer. So consider this diagram of the capacitor transducer. In this, we have taken two plates. One is a fixed plate, another one is a variable plate or mobile plate. Okay, so the distance in normal condition, in normal condition, when both plates are fixed, uh, what happens? The distance between the plates is D and plate plates area is A. Then how can you write the equation for the formula or equation for this C? C is equal to epsilon A by D farads. Okay, so what is the formula of C? Capacitance C is equal to epsilon A by D. So epsilon is nothing but it is internally having again epsilon naught, epsilon naught, relative permittivity and uh, free space permittivity. So into A by D, A is nothing but area of the plates and D is nothing but distance between the plates. Hope you understand now. Now what happens? We have taken a fixed plate, one plate is fixed and the second plate is also fixed. Suppose if both the plates are fixed, then D is fixed, A is fixed. Okay, when A and D are both are fixed, what about the capacitance C? C is also fixed because epsilon naught, epsilon R both are constants. Okay, epsilon is a constant factor. A is constant here because we are using the same plate throughout and D is nothing but distance between the plates. We are using the same distance throughout. Then C value is same. But now in this case what we are doing is we are applying some displacement on this mobile plate. One plate is fixed and no movement in that way plate another plate is more mobile and we are we are changing the movement of this plate depending upon the displacement required so we are giving the movement to and fro movement for this plate so that it can move in this direction or it goes in this direction so because of this movement what happens area of the plate will not vary but the distance between the plates may be affected. Sometimes it may be larger or sometimes it may be narrower because depending upon the movement. If it is going away, then distance is more. If it is going inside, then distance becomes decreases. So as the distance of this particular formula varies, then what happens? Capacitance also vary. If distance increases, capacitance decreases. If distance decreases, capacitance increases because both are inversely proportional to each other. So the here the entire process is completely depending upon the change in any of these parameters, either area or distance of the plate. Here the displacement is caused to one of the plates of this capacitor. So as the distance increases, capacitance decreases. As the distance decreases, capacitance increases. So the movement with respect to the movement in the plate is measured with respect to the capacitance value. This is how the capacitance transducer works. So in this way we can measure the displacement of a device by using any one of these three parameters like resistance, inductance and capacitance. Thank you.